Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you for coming, Senator King. I've actually been looking forward to having some kind of a discussion for a long time. Um, I am actually very upset. I feel like your analysis of our foreign policy is very simplistic. And, um, Jeez, it I took almost an hour to cover You're the right. whole world. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing what you can do in an hour. Um, I would suggest that one of the things you could look at is that when we talk about the radicalization of Muslims is that we look at our um, policy of drone strikes, our policy of sending weapons, and actually we're not sitting in the middle of an issue. We have fomented, we have fomented the radicalization of many Muslims across the world. We've been doing that by our drone strikes. When we went into Iraq, we purposely put Shia against Sunni. When we look at Syria, we are purposely, we have many military manufacturers in this country who are profiting from war. We are fomenting terror instead of helping to really exercise leadership that helps us to become safer. We become safer not by um, educating people according to the way we want it, but by respecting what they've experienced in our prisons, in Guantanamo, in Bahrain, in Abu Ghraib. This radicalizes people. This kind of, this kind of treatment radicalizes. Drone strikes in Pakistan radicalize people all over Pakistan. This is our policy, and we need to take responsibility for this. When you talk about Arafat, I think he made a lot of mistakes, but the one, one peace plan that you cited as an example of poor leadership was actually to his credit. What he was being offered was the equivalent of us being given this auditorium, but not having any control over the doors of the windows where we could get in or out, or airspace. Is that a good, fair peace plan? If you look carefully, that's what you're gonna find he was offered before he signed the Oslo Accords where he actually thought Israel was a good partner in peace. Instead, Israel has now over 500,000 settlements, is taking more and more land. When you go, I totally agree that you go overseas and you can learn by what you see. I went to the West Bank, by the way. Well, I, did you go to Gaza? No. No, it's why not? These are, this is directly, we are responsible for what is happening in Gaza with the five children, babies that have recently frozen to death. My son was in Israel last summer and was under rocket attack from Gaza. Okay, so we don't could talk about me that. About Gaza. I am, excuse me, Do not and the rocket me about attack. Gaza. I, people, people. People who send rockets indiscriminately it. into civilian territory. And would you please look at the Israeli for, defense for site in, in terms of if they if they kept their ceasefires on the Palestinians, that would be the the best defense against rocket fire. You've made okay. your point, so Thank we'll you. let the senator respond. I agree with a lot of what she said, and I think we have to look hard at what our policies are, and that's why I talked about education and working with the Muslim countries and not demonizing all Muslims. Uh, and we didn't really talk about the Israeli-Palestinian. I did want you to know that, that I did go to Ramallah and met, met with the prime minister of, of, uh, of the Palestinian state and am trying hard to figure out what the right uh, solution is. The drones are a really hard problem. The drones have taken, uh, have, have killed uh, much of the leadership. It it's really has crippled uh, a lot of Al Qaeda. And, and, you know, we historically, a drone is a highly intelligent artillery shell. And, in, and if you have you ever seen pictures of what, sh what Atlanta looked like after Sherman went through, the entire city was destroyed. A drone is a, is a, is a, is a very precisely targeted, and there may be collateral damage, but I know that it is immensely less collateral damage than an indiscriminate artillery shell or a bomb from an airplane, because they, it's, they are targeted on individual people. The collateral damage is very small, but you're right. There are cases where it has obviously hurt, uh, radicalized people. It's a matter of what's the risk adjustment, the, or, or the risk assessment of whether or not you're radicalizing people versus uh, uh, taking off the battlefield someone who is plotting to blow up the World Trade Center 
or uh, the Canary Wharf in London. Uh, this is a war. We don't want it. We didn't start it, but it is a war. And, and, it, and it has to be, we, we, we have to be sensitive to all the things you're talking about. I totally agree. I think I said, I, w I thought the Iraq adventure was, was a terrible mistake, and it did exactly what you said. It, 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 it radicalized and created opponents that we didn't have before. I, I totally agree with that. But on the other hand, we can't just say, oh, well, we're just not going to be involved with these guys uh, because they want to kill us. I'm sorry. They do. I know that. And so it's a matter of finding a policy that I think uh, deals with the very real physical threats, while at the same time deals with the underlying social and political and cultural problems that you outlined. I, the president announced last week that he's having a summit meeting at the White House in the middle of February on countering extremism around the world, and I've wormed my way into it. I, you know, I sent him a note and said, I'd like to come. And I just found out an hour ago that I'm, I'm going to be there. Because I think I'm the guy who, who wants to not do it all by drones and, and weapons. I want to try to figure out how do we de-radicalize people and take the steam out of this movement. So I don't think we're really uh, uh, that far apart. But you know, that's OK. That's, that's, that's I have the microphone, are. so they let me ask oh, the okay. next question. Yes. 